in the last lectures we took up the discrete time representation in uh, z transform so we saw linear discrete time systems uh, in in the z transform domain so there was a z transfer function or the pulse transfer function and it was a simply uh, an input output relationship but uh, since we are also dealing with state space realizations we must also look into discrete time state space realizations and uh, this week's lecture is going to be about that so this is not uh, we are not going to put uh, so much uh, stress uh, on uh, uh, on this aspect uh, of the discrete time uh, systems uh, although i should mention that there is uh, there are entire books covering discrete time systems and their representations analysis and uh, controller design and all however since this is part of uh, a single course uh, on advanced control systems we would not try to cover so much in this uh, also because um, the the relevant ideas uh, which would take you forward in exploring this subject in any direction if you want to go the fundamental concepts uh, are uh, covered uh, already in the while discussing the continuous time systems and going ahead also whatever concepts we will be covering uh, will also mostly hold for the discrete time state space representations without much alteration and if there are some alterations you would uh, eventually find them out if you are going deeper into discrete time systems working with discrete time systems also another reason is that we generally don't come across discrete time systems which are inherently discrete time in nature we don't come across such systems so often so and mostly what we do we design for a continuous time system and then apply it using a digital computer uh, and since the sampling frequency is so high it doesn't affect so much on the performance and we don't need to actually uh, do another do uh, uh, do um, a theoretical analysis afresh in order to understand what would be the behavior coming out of this uh, of the of the system when we are applying the controller through a, a digital platform so the response would be similar uh, as we had analyzed for the continuous time system considering continuous control action so uh, because of uh, these reasons um, the discrete time um, control systems are not studied uh, formally so much but some introduction are given which would help you to go forward if you are actually doing any further uh, research or further work using discrete, uh, discrete time systems so here we see we have a, a system of difference uh, equations uh, system which is represented by difference equations and uh, in the beginning case we are not having any uh, the, the input you see it is not time shifted only the output only the outputs are having some time shifts so these are called the uh, delays uh, 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 or the step delays so k plus 1 is the unit Tape delay and like such as this is the n, n step delay so here we have n step delay and likewise so how many step delays are uh, in the output we have a maximum n number of step delays how, how many step delays in the input no step delays in the input for this first case that we are considering and from here we would build up a structure for the state space representation and then we will take up the matter of tape delays in the input also so like you can see that we have defined yk as x1k and then we have defined x xik plus 1 as xi plus 1k so every x1 k plus 1 would be x2 k x2 k plus 1 
would be x 3 k and so on up until uh, we come to uh, x n uh, this would be k plus 1 sorry x n k plus 1 and x n k plus 1 would be your uh, y k plus n basically and that would be equal to b u k minus this whole thing that you see in the left hand side apart from y k plus n and that would come here and then every this y k plus 1 y k plus 2 can be replaced by x1 uh, x1 k so this can be replaced by x1 k this can be replaced by x1 k, x2 k and likewise so this is how we go ahead and find out the x n k plus 1 and this gives us the structure of the state space rep representation which is this so here instead of the x dot that we are having in the continuous time representation the equivalent of this is x k plus 1 so the unit delay unit step delay in the state so it actually gives us the next step so you can read it so you, you have a signal at the kth step you are trying to find out what is the signal at the k plus 1th step that means the next step so it basically is giving you the actual trajectory here not the velocity it is actually giving you the the information of the trajectory at the next step so if you in the state space if in the state space suppose you are here you would know the next step which might be this so you are going from here to here in a discrete fashion in this case you are going in a discrete fashion from here to here then suppose you are going here as you calculate your xk plus 1 you would come to know all this one by one all the steps you would come to know one by one and eventually you will get a trajectory in the state space so this will be the trajectory so this uh, this the states are not so separated out normally they are very close to each other but for our uh, for the for uh, for showing here in picture i have i have kept them so much separated so uh, this is the this is the situation and in this representation you can very well understand this x k plus 1 is nothing but x1 k plus 1 x2 k plus 1 till xn k plus 1 and since we have discovered these relationships our g matrix will be what you can see here and our h matrix would be what you can see here so this f and e i, I have uh, noted denoted as f and e instead of c and d so this will be so this comes out in a very familiar uh, uh, familiar pattern which was the first companion form we were having so it comes out in the first companion form and the idea is more or less similar how we have actually formed the equations now we go into understanding when we will have delays in the input also and we cannot exceed the number of delays in the output uh, it is the unit de delays are in also restricted to n the input side delay and in that case we assume that we, we are defining the states in the same manner that is we select x1 k as y k and then x i k plus 1 as x i plus 1 k so in that manner we select and then the final equation will also come but then there will be additional these terms in that final equation and there will be some terms in the in every x i k plus 1 equation also uh, here we have put some terms like h i h i u k additional terms we have put so that would give us the same g expression but my h expression will be like this 
and now we have to actually find out what these h1 to hn are and we go in the same manner as we had done earlier for the continuous time systems we we see we uh, we see that yes yk would be uh, sorry x yk would be x1 plus h0 uk so this is the defining equation first equation and from there these other equations will start coming these equations will start coming okay and eventually eventually uh, you would proceed and you would find out that you would be able to find out all your delays of in the output from i equal to 0 to n you would be able to find out y k plus i so that you would substitute in the main equation which is this and then substituting the y k plus 1 in this equation you would be able to compare coefficients because there will not be any states the states would cancel themselves from left hand side and right hand side you can try it out uh, in your rough copy and then you will be able to compare coefficients and again we would come to the Toeplitz matrix so you can understand that pretty understand pretty well that the uh, that the that the state space representations and formulating the state space representations the ideas remain quite the same so you will be able to do it for other uh, forms as well and we generally don't uh, go into a detailed discussion of all the forms and this is the only form that we will show for the purpose of this course so here you would have a Toeplitz matrix multiplied by this h column which will give you the b column this you know this you know hence this is this is known and as well this is invertible so this also becomes known and then you are able to get the h matrix so G matrix was known, H matrix got known, F and E also known. So you get the entire state space representation. So this is uh, all uh, about the state space representation. Uh, so we have shown only the first companion form and both uh, sub first companion form in in one of one of its uh, ways of derivation. And there other forms are also there all the same uh, forms that we studied in the continuous time uh, discourse they can also be uh, made for the for the discrete time system so uh, that that is also that is also there but for the purpose of the course we are not going to in too much detail uh, in in those in those uh, in those forms uh, so with that I would end the lecture here this particular lecture uh, uh, I will end now thank you